What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about a very important topic and we're going to get into marketing. Yes, marketing on the internet. What I want to talk about is the stock market marketing department, the crypto marketing department, the Airbnb marketing department, the Turo marketing department. Stock market's been in a weird place for going on two years. However, it doesn't matter. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the honesty. If you invest money in the stock market over the long haul, you should make money. This is something, a historical fact. However, let's go ahead and kind of pierce that a little bit. How much money are you gonna make? is dependent upon how much money you invest. And this is where the stock market marketing department starts to get a little crazy. If you're doing traditional stock market marketing, investing, essentially you go ahead and buy some stocks and bonds and you hold on to them and they appreciate over time, you should get an eight to 10% appreciation year after year, which is quite good. However, this is not enough to make you rich fast or quickly, but this is where things go because there's the traditional stock market investing and then there's something that's called options investing. And a lot of people are talking about that you can use options, which is an option is you bet against the stock market. You're betting the stock market's gonna go down or you're betting the stock market's gonna go up and there is a complete framework of indicators and statistics and things you need to bring into your bearing to make a good guess. This is what has happened. The options market has kind of replaced the traditional stock market department. I will say, once again, if you could have bought Apple 20 years ago, even though Apple is, I don't even know what Apple's doing. I haven't looked. I own Apple and I just, this is what I did. I have two brokerage accounts and I just bought some stuff and I haven't looked at, I don't even know what's going on. I'll have to look at that today because here's the thing. If you want to make money through the traditional stock market marketing department investment strategy, you find good companies, you buy the stocks, you hold on to them, and you do not look at them day to day, month to month, or even year to year. You look at what this stock has done over the last five years or what this stock has done over the last 10 years. But one of the things that happens, because when you think of the stock market, you, you seem to have these images of these huge capital. And what has happened is the options marketing department has blended so well into the stock market marketing department that you would think that someone who has a brokerage account is automatically trading options. And here's the thing. Are there people who make a lot of money with options? Absolutely. The big banks have trading boards. They have people they're paying two, three, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year to trade options for them. So they're making money. However, I have a feeling that the average, let's call them rookie options investor. This is someone who saw a course online or saw some stuff online and they got into it. I don't think that these rookies are making the same kind of money that the banks are making for one fundamental fact. Remember Bed, Bath and Beyond? There was a guy, I can't remember his name, but he invested $25 million into the Bed, Bath and Beyond thing that was going on and he got to 125 million. Now, I want you to listen to me. I want you to really, really pay attention to me. He only got to that 125 million because he started worth 25 million. This is one of the major reasons that banks make more money with options trading and trading because they have a bigger capital deposit. Let's say you're a great options trader as a rookie options trader and you only have a hundred bucks to invest. You can only make so much off that hundred bucks. This is one of the reasons that this guy who bet on Bed Bath & Beyond, I think he was a Wall Street bets guy. He made so much money because he started off with a lot of money. And this is something that people have debated with me that you do not need a large brokerage account to make significant money. Once again, I will go ahead and say this. Options 
real estate, not necessarily business. I'll come back to that. But typically you need a large capital deposit to go correctly to extract a large capital yield. Now, there are a ton of options traders out there who only have $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 and they're trading in the market. And many of these guys are really good and they're turning their 1,000 into 2,000. They're turning their 1,000 into three and 4,000 because they know what they're doing. They're making the appropriate bets. However, there's people, and I've literally heard not one, not two, not three, not four, but five options traders actually come on YouTube as they're talking about their videos and actually said these words. I could not make the kind of trades that I wanted to make because I don't have enough money. And these are seasoned options traders who know what they're doing, who know. So once again, this is proof of my theory that you need a lot of money to make a lot of money with options and marketing investments. And essentially there's a whole contingency of people online who are saying, hey, you don't need a lot of money. If you buy my training, I can turn your hundred dollars into a hundred thousand dollars. And see, that's where things start to fall apart because let me go ahead and say, if you had a trading analysis that could turn $100 to a hundred thousand dollars and let's say you could do this in three months then guess what you could do with that hundred thousand dollars you got if you could turn one hundred dollars into a hundred thousand you could turn a hundred thousand into ten months into ten million so if you had those specific and exact trading skills you would not be on youtube trying to sell them to mom and pop investors you would march into wall street and sell it to a hedge fund and get billions get billions because they have a lot of money to start investing. And that's one of the things you could go ahead and, in a partnership and you wouldn't be on YouTube. So what I'm seeing due to the stock market marketing department is that so many people have this fundamental belief that they can turn a little sum of money into a large payday if they would just go ahead and invest in the stock market and literally and you know, I, I did some research. The average 62 year old's brokerage account balance is about 250,000. These are people who've invested for decades. These are people who put money into their accounts for decades. And once again, they've done the right things. They've maybe paid off their house. They managed their credit well, and they only have 250,000 because the thing is that this is something that the stock market marketing department doesn't talk about is how much money you have to invest because um, I put up something and someone had um, a theoretical correction on one of my videos talking about, I don't understand basic math and everything. And a lot of people, when I put these type of videos, they come up with a theory or a hypothesis that's removed from everyday life. I've never seen one of these commentary reviews saying, well, this is what I did. That is always missing. They're going from the theory based upon the stock marketing and marketing department, because essentially for you to actually get to million dollars a year retirement, you need to be putting away 25 to $30,000 a year invested, which over 10 years is $300,000. Over 20 years is 600,000. Over 30 years is $900,000. This person who wanted to disagree with me was doing this from a pure uh, position of conjecture, not personal experience. And this is one of the things that get me because we could sit here all day and you could go ahead and give me your conjecture, your projections and all this other stuff based upon math and on paper, your argument looks really, really good on paper. But when you take it off of paper and put it into the real world, it starts to fall apart because here's the thing. I have a few theories on people disagree with me. Number one, you need to make more money. And a lot of people have a problem with that. It's like, you don't need to make more money. You need to manage your money better, which I agree with. You need to have proper money management skills. However, one of the things is that so many people in America, like 50% of America, which is 160 million people. And once you start to get into, uh, well, let, let's go ahead and talk about it. We have a population of 330 plus million people, right? 
guess what? Half of the population doesn't work. Half the population's children, elderly, so half of the population, we may have a population of 330 million, 330 million people, but we only have a working population of 160 million. So once we can go ahead and look at this, 80 million out of the 160 million are literally two or three paychecks away from other poverty in the United States of America, which also, if you were compare and contrast these people to the rest of the working world, they would appear to be rich even though they're struggling in the, in the United States of America. I, I've said this before, it's expensive to live in the United States of America. And this is why so many people are leaving and going to foreign countries to retire because it's very expensive to live here. It's going to get more expensive. And this is why the stock market marketing department, the Airbnb marketing department, the Turo marketing department, you have a few people who have gotten in good locations, which I believe is key to be successful with Airbnb, to be successful with Toro. And they're like, hey, this is easy. You can do it anywhere. And the, the simple fact is you can't. I am in Atlanta, Georgia, which is the fourth most visited state in the United States. Don't believe me? Go to Google and check it out. Literally every day I can go to Zillow or I can go to realtor.com and I can find what I called a failed Airbnb. This is a fully furnished home that these people are trying to rent on Zillow for an exaggerated rate. I found a normal, regular home on Zillow. It's actually posted on my main Facebook page, community page, and they wanted 8,500 bucks per month for rent. 8,500 bucks per rent. Let me, let me go ahead and give you a scenario. I was looking at moving and I was gonna work a deal with this guy who owned a $3 million condo. Guess what I would have been paying for a $3 million condo? $9,000 a month. So you could go out and get a regular house that's fully furnished and pay $8,500 or you can get a $3 million condo that's on the 44th floor and paid almost $500 more. See where I'm going with this? There have been so many people who bought into the Turo marketing department that they feel that they can go out find a piece of property and this is this is something else too and i've seen it all over the place these turo homes are poorly furnished with crappy furniture you, you could literally see the furniture and know that it's a turo home because they go out and put the cheapest furniture that they can and this is another thing so you have a regular house you have cheap furniture but for some reason you're gonna make all this money now in some marketplaces that will work I would assume that a Florida, a condo that's 15 minutes from Disney, I think that'll work. <clears throat> Why? Because <clears throat> Disney is 15 minutes away. I think Turo works really well in Florida because Disney and all these other parks are just literally around the corner. What I'm saying is literally every day when I'm on the internet and I'm looking at properties and stuff, I see failed Airbnbs all over the place in Atlanta, Georgia. In Atlanta, Georgia, it's the fourth most visited place in the United States. And you wanna know, <clears throat> you wanna know why we have so many failed Airbnbs? We have too many Airbnbs. If the Airbnb population base was cut in half, a lot of these owners would start to be very, very profitable because there just wouldn't be as many Airbnbs on the market. Now, question, why are there so many Airbnbs? The real estate marketing department. There's a lie and um, someone told me it was Andrew Carnegie that made up this lie that most millionaires are made from real estate. All right, let's go to the billionaire class. And there's a list of these people who are worth all of this money. And you will see in person after person after person, they own businesses. The richest people in the world own businesses. But for some reason, the average person due to the real estate marketing department has this belief that if they can get a piece of real estate and hold on to it, that they're going to get rich. Real estate, from my opinion, can personally wreck your finances if you don't know what you're doing. And I actually got into some real estate with a partner. It wasn't a complete disaster, but we did not make a lot of money. And then the second project, there was two projects. The first project, we just, we just broke even after doing all that work, right? And then the second project, I went ahead, I was on the job, I did it by myself. I made way more money 
but I had to do a lot of management. I had to make sure the crews were there. There were so many things I had to do. And honestly, it wasn't exciting. It wasn't, it was a pain in the booty for me. I am not in the real estate business. I'm not in the car rental business because literally there are multiple people running ads on YouTube to get you into the car rental business. The other day, um, someone stopped me because actually we were on the elevator and he actually got back on. He wanted to talk to me about the car rental business because he wants to get in the car rental business. And I gave him the honest truth. I was like, if you want to lose money, go ahead and get in the car rental business. If you want to lose money. And it wasn't a pleasant conversation because I was telling him it was, you know, I told him I had 20 people arrested, 60 flat tires, $160,000 in car repair. He was like, what? Now also, another thing is, many of the people you will see on YouTube did not, they do not have a fleet as large as mine was. My fleet was 31 cars. So between my two personal vehicles, I own 33 cars at the highest point. Now that's over with, I'm down to three cars and I'm trying to sell them and get out of it. And once I sell that last car, I am out of the car rental business. But once again, when you come along these internet built and defined marketing departments, reality does not matter. One YouTuber who's been fighting with uh, these other people who have a Toro Airbnb training course, they've been fighting, they've been fighting hard. And one of the things that I see is due to the real estate marketing department, these two young hustlers have made an incredibly lucrative business of training people to enter into the Airbnb market where there's a good chance that they can fail because the real estate marketing department, the stock market marketing department, the Toro marketing department are so strong that you feel that you can go ahead and get into this business and you should make money. Now, let's talk about Glendon. You're talking about the stock market marketing department, you're talking about the real estate marketing department, you're talking about the Toro marketing department. If these things are so bad, where are all the negative commentary? Where are all the negative reviews? I'm gonna tell you why you don't see a lot of negative reviews about real estate, about Toro. People are deeply ashamed for failing because of the marketing department saying that you should be successful if you enter into this business a lot of people just don't want to enter these businesses and fail and when they fail there's a high degree of personal shame so they don't make a video they don't they don't go ahead and like take it upon it's like i was lied to they don't do that that's like man i, I just did it wrong i failed and you never hear from these people. And until I had the uh, Kill Switch Chronicles, which was my name for my car rental business, until I started putting up those videos, it was really, really hard to find a lot of negative commentary about the car rental business online. And then now there's tons of people. It's like my car was stolen, my car was wrecked, I had all these issues, constant stuff that you can see now. But when I was in this department, I didn't really see those videos. So this is why you don't see a lot of negativity, but here's the thing. When I got in the car rental business and I got myself a fleet of 31 cars, I wasn't trying to make money off of you. I didn't do it to create a car rental course. I didn't do it, you know, it's like based on paper, once again, based on paper, the car rental business looked amazing. It looked amazing based on paper. But once it came off paper, and enter into the real marketplace, that's when it started to crumble. That's when it started to fall apart. And, you know, once again, with all of these marketing departments who are urging people, who are convincing people that certain things are good, then they're finding out that they're not necessarily good once they're introduced to reality and they have to participate into the real world. All right, it's me. Let's talk about some that I got going on. I got a course the power of productivity, how to get things done. And this is a course I should have did seven years ago and I never understood why I needed to do it because I would have people who would take my courses and I would have some people who would get amazing results and I would have some people who would never get started. And that really bothered me and I was like, what is going on? And then I remembered the people who had amazing results, number one, already had money, number two, already had something up and started. The people who didn't have the good results, they never really got started because they couldn't figure out how to get things done. So during this course, we're gonna talk about how to think, how to use your subconscious 
subconscious mind, how to actually create lists, how to actually create a daily framework where you can get things done. Because essentially, and I'm gonna give you an example. Let's say you're out and you're digging a hole and every day you remove 10% of what you need to remove out of this hole. Every day, 10%, that's all you do is dig in a hole. In 10 days, you'll be finished. And that's the whole power because so many people want to be uh, having all these things, all these agendas on when it just works out better when you have a limited things on your agenda and really focus on getting things done. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So this course is gonna be below, it's gonna be in the comment section and it should be in the description box. And the things that you can do to actually get your stuff up and running and you go and this is going to be really pivotal because number one you got the free money course to organize your money now this course is a paid course for you to get things done and then next month we're going to get into the holding company game so what you want to do is go ahead and get in this course and start learning how to get things done how to do research how to set up things and more and more and more things and once again since this is a foundational course the price is super cheap, so you have no excuse not to get in this course. So go ahead, get in this course. It's going to be below, and I will see you guys in the next video, and I'll probably have a smile on my face.